Hello again, this is Trish Triumpho Sullivan with Art 1A, Art History, and this is the Art of the Ancient World. And we're into lecture number 12, um, which is Ancient Greece. So let's move right along and see what we got with Ancient Greece. Um, so the world of Ancient Greece uh, was pretty amazing. The environment of Greece is marked by sea and land, mountains and valley. Um, these geographic features had an influence on Greek culture and society. Physical boundaries led to the rise of separate city-states, and the ancient Greeks became advanced navigators who looked to the sea for trade, war, and colonization. Um, periods of ancient Greek history, there's basically three main periods that define the art history of ancient Greece. These periods are marked by evolutions in artistic style and creation that reflect historical and culture, uh, cultural changes in ancient Greece. Oops, this doesn't quite look right. Let's get it into the right spot. There we go. Looks a little better. Okay, looks like we can see what we're doing here now. Um, down. Okay. Um, keep moving along here. So there's the Archaic period from 800 to 480 BCE, the Classical period from 480 to 404 BCE, the Late Classical period, 404 to 323 BCE, and the Hellenistic period, 323 to 80 BCE. So 80 years before the birth of Christ, which is our kind of dividing line in ancient history. Here's a little key uh, timeline of key events. Um, more or less 900 BCE, we get, you know, city-states beginning to form. 776, we're looking at the first Olympic Games. Um, 508, democracy is introduced in Athens. Um, 490 to 479 BCE, we've got the Persian Wars, um, with Athens and Sparta leading Greek defenses against Persia. Um, 447, we're looking at the Golden Age of Pericles, and the Parthenon is constructed. Um, 431 to 404, we've got the Peloponnesian Wars take, taking place. Um, and 336 BCE, Alexander the Great controls Greece, and his empire spurs the Hellenistic period. Um, in 147 BCE, Rome controls Greece and incorporating it into the Roman Republic. So that's a kind of a brief little history there. So the Archaic period um, of ancient Greece refers to the span of time from approximately 800 BCE to the second Persian invasion of Greece, which is 480 BCE. Um, during the Archaic period, the ancient Greeks developed advanced seafaring uh, techniques and established uh, city-state colonies across the coastal regions of the Aegean Sea. Uh, that's the sea between Greece and modern Turkey. So you can see there uh, the uh, uh, kind of the influence and the area that was controlled by Greece at that time. So the ancient Greek city-state or polis was a political entity formed during the Archaic period. Greek city-states in this period shared some elements of culture and language but were largely independent. Greek city-states were ruled by, by the populations of their city and controlled the lands surrounding the city. The ancient Greeks did not consider themselves to belong to a common Greek identity during this period, um, but rather as citizens of their city-state. Some city-states were ruled by kings. Um, democracy, which comes from the Greek word for power, uh, from the people, emerged emerged from the Greek city-state of Athens in the 6th century BCE. Athenian democracy was direct. This means citizens had a direct seat in the legislative assembly of Athens and could be randomly selected to hold government roles. Um, 
The Olympic Games were first held in 776 BCE. Athletes were very important to the ancient Greeks, and many Greek works of art idealized the human form and athletes. Um, notice that the athletes competed nude. Uh, so the Phoenician alphabet was the foundation for ancient Greek writing. The first examples of ancient Greek writing date back to approximately 750 BCE. Some of the earliest written records about art and artistic traditions date back to the Greek world. These records help art historians better understand the, the world of ancient Greece, Greek art. Storytelling was very important to ancient Greek culture. Many famous epic poems recalling mythology and war, including the Iliad and Odyssey, were passed down by oral tradition before being written down for the first time. Heroes, gods, and characters from epic poems appeared in Greek works of art. Greek artists were among the first to sign their works of art. Artists were proud of their works and wanted to signal who made them to potential new patrons of individuals who funded art. So during the Archaic period, ancient Greek sculpture was heavily, in, heavily influenced by Egyptian tradition. The kouros and core sculptural forms were rigid and forward-facing and resembled Egyptian scu sculpture. The, the Egyptians influenced a lot of people at that time. Um, so core uh, sculptures were depicted young women. Um, Cory figures had an archaic smile and braided hair, um, and they were depicted with clothing. Kuro sculptures depicted young men. They, um, they also had an archaic smile, kind of had the same, similar facial features, and they were depicted without clothing. Um, so this is the Peplos Kore, and it's in Athens, Greek, from the Archaic period, 531 BCE, and it's marble with some remnants of paint. Uh, so this stat marble statue is named for a common type of sculpture of female use during the Archaic period, um, the Kore. Uh, like the Chorus, the Kore was a type of freestanding Greek sculpture that had a rigid... Um, uh, whoops, that, that uh, had a rigid forward facing form. Let's see, I think that works a little better. Um, the Cori typically had emotionless expression on their face, referred to as the archaic smile. The figure has braided hair flowing down her shoulders. Uh, the sculpture was also named for the type of garment that is cloaked in, the peplos, which was a type of shawl worn by women in ancient Greece. This sculpture was likely intended to mark a grave of a woman. Greek colonization across the coastal areas of the Mediterranean spread Greek culture and language. The ancient Greeks largely believed their gods took on human form, one exception being the god Pan, who had goat legs. This differed from the divine forms found in ancient Egyptian and many Near Eastern religions. Uh, major Greek gods and goddesses include a Athena, the goddess of reason, wisdom, peace, and the patron of Athens, and Zeus, the king of the gods, ruler of Mount Olympus and god of lightning and justice. In Greek religious belief and ritual, there was also little emphasis on the importance of the afterlife compared to ancient Egyptian religion. Instead, ancient Greeks emphasized the importance of the present, Ancient Greeks worshipped gods associated with various spheres of life and ritual, including farming, love, sheep, or athletics. So the, the islands and peninsulas of Greece were mountainous and rich in stone resources. Marble was one of the favorite materials used by Greek sculptors. Bronze was also a main material used by Greek sculptors. However, few original Greek bronze sculptures survive today. Many famous Greek statues were replicated by the Romans. These copies exist today and provide a sense of, Greek, of the Greek originals that were lost. 
Many examples of Greek pottery, coins, and marble sculptures survive today, but there are relatively few examples of Greek paintings and materials uh, made of materials which can decay, like wood. Although monumental temples and structures survive, many of their decorations and furnishings have not survived. Painted Greek pottery provides the best sense of what Greek painting styles may have been like. Unpainted white marble is often associated today with ancient Greek sculpture and architecture, but evidence suggests that the Greeks originally painted most sculptures and many buildings. This is referred to as polychrome stonework. Over time, the paint on these works of art faded. The reconstructed sculpture from the temple of Aphaia, Aegina, on the left represents what art historians believe the original color scheme of many sculptures could have looked like. So the history of ancient Greek pottery is divided into five major time periods, um, which reflect evolutions in style. The Proto-Geometric Period, which is five, uh, 1050 BCE, Geometric Period, 900 BCE, Black Figure Period, 600 BCE, and Raid Figure Period, 530 BCE. So Proto-Geometric Pottery, um, uh, so during both the Proto-Geometric and Geometric Periods, Greek pottery was decorated with abstract and geometric designs. During the proto-geometric period, Greek pottery had large amounts of unpainted space. Proto-geometric pottery drew from Mycenaean and Minoan conventions, but represented a dramatic improvement in quality and technical accomplishment from pottery during the Greek Dark Age. Vases in the geometric style also featured abstract and geometric designs, but were more densely decorated than earlier examples of pottery. Geometric pottery is characterized by several horizontal bands about the circumference, circumference covering the entire vase. Between these lines, the geometric artists use several decorative motifs, such as geometric patterns. During this period, abstract human figures and animals began to first feature in designs. So they're very abstracted. They don't, you don't really see them very much. Um, black figure pottery is named because of their decoration style. Um, designs are painted on the body of a black figure pottery vessel using shapes and colors that look like silhouettes. The Greek black figure vases are, were very popular with the ancient Etruscans and were frequently imported by them. Ancient Greek pottery production centers created black figure pottery specifically for export to ancient Eturia. Red figure vase painting is one of the most important styles in ancient Greek pottery. Red figure vases were exported throughout Greece and beyond. Of the red figure vases produced in Athens alone, more than 40,000 specimens and fragments survive today. The art of ancient Greece illustrates the active exchange of ideas, cultural influences, and traditions in the ancient Mediterranean world. The study of art and innovation in ancient Greece establishes a foundation for better understanding later civilizations and their art. Ancient Etruscan and Roman artists and architects were helped by ancient Greece and its art and culture. So the ancient Greeks were responsible for great evolutions in architecture. Religious sites were a major focus of architectural innovation. Ancient Greeks believed that their gods dwelled in what they created, and so temples were seen as very holy places. This is the Athenian Agora. It's in Athens, Greece. It's archaic through Hellenistic, uh, 600 to 150 BCE. Agoras were public outdoor spaces in ancient Greek, um, in ancient Greek city-states that were the location of government, religious, and business activities. The Athenian Agora was located at the base of the Athenian Acropolis. Throughout the history of Athens, it underwent changes. It was first destroyed by the invading Persians during the 
Peloponnesian War. The Athenian Agora was the location of the Athenaic Festival, a major celebration in, in ancient Athenian society that honored the goddess Athena, who was the patron deity of Athens. The Athenian Agora was had a processional pathway called the Panathenaic Way, which was used during the Panathenaic Festival and religious rituals. The Athenian Angora was also the location of other temples dedicated to the Greek gods and goddesses. In addition, the Athenian Angora was the site of governmental structures. Leaders met in the tholos during emergencies and councils of citizens met in the Bulterranean Chamber. So that's it on the ancient Greek.